Hey, how's it going? My name is Rhys Moss. I'm the founder of HPA Media, which is a multi six figure advertising agency for women's fashion brands. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to uh, basically improving these three things um, to grow your agency quicker. The three things that you need to focus on improving to grow your agency quicker. And you can see them listed out right now niche acquisition fulfillment. You're probably wondering, hey, that's a bit basic. Wait until you hear what I'm going to get into, right? Because these are the three things, you know, everybody's always talking about, hey, I want to get to 10K a month by, like, it's October now. They're like, by the end of the year, I want to be at 10K a month. I want to be at this. I want to be at that. But it's like they never know how to get there. They never know what are, what do they actually have to do to fill that gap, to speed up that time frame. You know, people just think about, oh, end of the year, end of the year, end of the year. But then they never know what they actually need to do. They never know what they actually need to be working on in order to get there. So that's what I'm going to break down in this video. Um, and the first thing that I want to just kind of get you to keep in mind here is that when you're setting a goal and you assign a time frame to it, don't become an emotionally attached to it. Don't think that because you're saying 10K by the end of the year, it has to happen. Be perfectly fine with the fact that if it takes a little bit longer, that's totally okay. We're building a business here. We're not doing, you know, we're not... Um, painting a room or something simple you know we're not doing something that we can accurately predict kind of how long it's going to be and to be fair like humans are terrible at setting time but um these are the three things that if you really put these in place and you really focus on improving these that's how it's going to close the gap and get you there quicker so we're going to go ahead and get into this but i just want you to make sure i want to make sure that you're aware that having a time frame and becoming emotionally attached to it is never a good thing um, and I can explain why, but I probably should say that for another video because I know right now you just want to hear about these three most important things. Uh, so number one, niche. When I talk about the niche, what most people think that they have to understand is something that they that like the service or something like that. They think that that's the important part. But they or you know, for example, if you're doing ecom, they think that you should know you know what. CVR is and what the com you know the conversion rate um, what different metrics are within the niche or something along those lines but it's not necessarily the case like those things are important but we'll get to that later in the fulfillment section it's very it's very very important that you understand the niche overall understand what their problems are what their pain points are um, what their biggest desires are and I mean like deeply deeply taking the time to understand it and if you're watching this video truth is most agencies don't actually do this. Most agencies don't find it fun to do target uh, target market research and don't take the time to actually do it. But when we look at any business pretty much ever, um, and I'm not talking about the agency here, I'm talking about other business models. If you ever have a look at, I know business plans are really hated on in the space, but if you ever actually have a look at what a real business plan looks like, one of the first things that the business owner is supposed to do is figure out what their market is, who their market is, what subsection of the market they want to go to first, knowing that they shouldn't just attack the market altogether, but they should start at a small subsection and then expand from there. They also need to start looking at what the USPs are of their service, you know, the unique selling propositions, what you, what's unique about their their offer, their service there, or whatever it is that they're providing. And stuff that I, I talk about a lot in my videos. So if you're new here, make sure that you go through back and watch some of the other videos later, especially talking about offers. Because I'm not really going to touch on an offer too much right now, but you need to know who the niche is to be able to give them what they want. And you're only going to know what they want when you know who the niche is and know everything about them. I give this example because I thought I knew my, my niche really well. But a couple of weeks ago, actually it was a couple of months ago now, I had a sales call for the agency. And the lady that I was speaking with said that the main reason that she wanted to grow her e-com store, her, her fashion brand, was simply because she wanted to get her kids into private school. And she felt like in order to do that, she needed to be making, I think it was like 150 plus um, a month, which sounds crazy just to get your kids into private school, but whatever. The point that I'm making here is we don't always know exactly what the needs, the needs and the wants are of the niche until we actually sit down and we ask them. And this can come across in many ways. If you're just getting started, there is no problem with shooting these people an email um, and just coming across as like somebody that's writing an article and you can you can still do it. You know, you can write an article on like LinkedIn or something. Um, and you would just send these people an email and you'd be like, hey, I'm writing an article getting to know niche. So let's just say your niche is... I don't know, window cleaners, commercial window cleaner, window cleaning. Um, let's say that's your niche. Very, let me write it down, right? Commercial 
and window cleaning, so I don't forget it. Let's say that's your niche. You can go and you can email these people and say, hey, I'm doing a article about commercial window cleaning businesses, uh, the frustrations that they have and things that are really important to them. So could I ask you a little bit about it? And a lot of the time, people are going to be willing to talk about it because it's all about them. You're asking them, hey, can, I, can you tell me about what's working for you? You know, what have you learned when you're running the business? And then obviously, you know, what are, what are the biggest lessons that you've had to go through? What are the biggest things that you've had to, to experience? And you just gather this information and you put that into, into your marketing content, into your outreach, etc. I gave the article example because a lot of people feel like they can't go to the market and just ask them what they want. And honestly, that's a limited belief. There is no problem actually going to the market and just sending them a message. Hey, my name is, uh, in my case, it'd be like, hey, my name is Reese. I own an, ad an agency. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I just want to know a little bit more about the niche that we want to work with. Uh, we want to work with, with people in the commercial window cleaning space. Um, and I wondered if you have a couple minutes just to answer a couple questions about your day to day um, and some of the things that, that you're finding difficult right now. You may find a way to word it a little bit more elegantly like that, uh, better than that, but at the end of the day, this is what you want to communicate across, just that you're there to get some information to help people out. Um, and what I really cannot push this across enough is that you need to know about your niche and you're going to learn about them one way or another. Whether you take the time to actually do the work up front or not, you're still going to need to know the same things in order to scale the business. You might as well learn a lot of this front end at the beginning. If you start learning about this stuff today, it's better than learning about it later when it's just going to take too much time. Because at the end of the day, everything here in niche acquisition fulfillment, I know, by the way, I haven't been able to give you specific things here that you need to know about the niche. But at the end of the day, you just the more that you know about the niche, the better. And that's the, that's the only truth here is the more that you know about them, the more that you know about their pains, how you can help them, what their issues are, how the business actually works, the language that they speak, etc. The more that you know about the niche, the better. Um, and one last thing that I really want to push on here is don't use these things as a way not to do the work. Don't say, oh, Reese said I need to know more about the niche, so I'm not going to do any outreach. That's not the way to go about it. You want to do the outreach so you can get the feedback from your niche, see if they want your offer, and if they don't, that's perfectly fine. You move on. If you launch a campaign, let's say you launch a campaign, 200 emails, you start sending them out and you get like five responses out of 200 emails and they're all saying it's horrible offer and nobody likes it. Like that's completely fine because we know that firstly, we haven't attracted enough attention and the people that did respond weren't interested anyway. So we probably need to improve the offer. Maybe the email campaign, but most likely as well, even like if it's a really good email uh, sorry, if it's a really good offer but a really bad email, there are still going to be there's still going to be some interest. Like some people are still going to be interested, even if the campaign is terrible. Um, which is why when we launch a let's say again 200 email campaign, and then we get 20 responses with people saying, "Hey, this is this is pretty interesting. I'd like to know more," or even less than 20. Like it's a good sign that we can probably just Im improve the campaign and even more. But point that I'm making here is has got nothing to do with cold email. It's all about just getting it out there and getting feedback from the audience. You know, you've all, you, you, you all should have heard by now that like failure, failure doesn't exist and everything is about getting feedback. And at the end of the day, if you're a marketer, then you understand this instinctively. So I don't need to tell you about this. But if you're new to the agency space or new to business as a whole, maybe you're not fully aware of it right now. But at the end of the day, you need to just put things out there, get audience, um, get the audience to give you feedback and then make improvements. And whether that's an improvement on your offer or the way that you communicate the offer, you know, sometimes it's simple, it's just moving some words around and making it sound better. Like a really, really simple stuff, but you have to know about the niche, okay? Second point is acquisition. I've already touched a little bit about that on the, while talking about the niche, but acqu acquisition is pretty simple. At the end of the day, I don't want to insult people by saying that, but it is pretty simple. Um, you want to have a, mo a maximum of two channels that you want to work on. And then all you got to do is just work on those every single day. So for us, we do cold email. Um, for us and the people that I work with, um, my mentorship students, we do cold email and we do organic marketing. Now, the one thing that I'm going to say here is that for some agencies, Facebook, uh, for some agencies and some niche, Facebook works better. For others, IG. And for others, LinkedIn. But once you're able to isolate which of these platforms is best for your niche, 
you're able to get it out there really quickly and really start taking massive action and getting um, getting loads of meetings booked in. But at the end of the day, I would always recommend you do at least cold email and organic marketing. I don't really care what platform organic marketing is on. It's generally one of these uh, free platforms. Facebook works really well, especially for niches that are more technical and you know more aware, like SaaS, for example. They're very active on Facebook um, and some other uh, and some other spaces as well. IG, pretty much every business is there, especially like fashion brands, econ brands, um, stuff like that. Very active on IG. Um, the only thing I don't really like about IG is it's difficult to contact the, or at least in my experience, my opinion, it's difficult to contact the um, the founders. I prefer to build a personal relationship with them, but that's not to say that IG doesn't work. I've got a couple of students that are killing it with IG right now, so keep that in mind. Um, and then LinkedIn works for pretty much anywhere and anyone as long as they've got a LinkedIn account and they're active on LinkedIn, of course. So um, the idea is that we want to have these two channels and the better that we get at those, the quicker we're going to achieve our goals. That's it. The, the better that we get at communicating our offer via cold email or creating good content on, on organic marketing and having good conversations over Messenger, the better that we're able to get at this, the better that we're able actually to focus um, and get better results. At the end of the day, when it comes to acquisition, the main thing that we have to do is kind of build a little bit of rapport with the people that we're speaking with, but most importantly, communicate what it is that we can do for them. If you're communicating that in a way that they're going to be interested and actually helps them, then they're going to want to book in a call because they're going to want to know more. Which leads me on to the last final point. I'll give this a little bonus here on the acquisition step, which is just don't overcomplicate things, but don't give too much, and, and also don't give too much away. So in your content, Tell people a lot about what you do, but not so much about how you do it. Keep in mind that if people on social media, they're not going on Facebook, IG, and LinkedIn specifically, they're not going on these platforms to learn and to have a massive masterclass on how to create UGC for their econ brand. You know, you're watching this video now, which is, we're already at 12 minutes, probably going to be, you know, it's, a, it's not a long video per se, but you wouldn't have watched this on Facebook, IG, or, or LinkedIn. Most likely you wouldn't have but you are here watching it on YouTube. So you gotta keep in mind about the platforms that you're using and what's suitable for the platforms. Like cold email, for example, you're not gonna go have a massive email there. A lot of agencies do and it's a big mistake, at least in my experience, it doesn't work. Shorter emails, straight to the point, are things that you're gonna, um, or is a, is, a, is a framework that's gonna perform better because people are able to get the information that they need quicker. Same thing with social media. People want the information quick. They don't wanna watch a 20 minute video just to kind of find out which free things they can use to grow their agency, or in your case, their commercial window cleaning business. Um, they just kind of want it straight to the point. But my point that I'm making here and educating to you guys is that your job is just to make sure that you can improve whatever method of acquisition you're doing. Even if it's cold calls, it doesn't matter. The better that you can get at that, the better you're gonna do. And if you boil it down and realize that there's just three things here that you really need to know, it makes it so simple because you don't need to start worrying about like a bunch of crazy stuff right now, like reporting and having a website and all of this craziness. You just need to know a lot about your niche, a lot about the acquisition channels that you're using, cold email and organic marketing. You don't, if you're doing cold email and organic marketing, you don't need to start looking into cold calling or running Facebook ads or well, running at Facebook ads for your agency or any of that nonsense because it's just gonna be a distraction. You gotta work on whatever you're working with. So if you're working with cold email and organic marketing, your job is to get as good as that uh, at that as possible. If you do cold email and organic marketing and you decide to stop after two weeks once you've acquired a bit of knowledge already, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get your knowledge up here and then you're gonna be like, oh, cold email's not working, let me go and do cold calling and then you're gonna start again and you're gonna work cold calling up up, 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 and it's gonna get probably around the same level and you're gonna be like, ah, it's not working, let me go and try Pinterest. Um, and then you're gonna go on Pinterest and then everybody's gonna look at you like, what are you doing? Pinterest doesn't work. Um, and you're gonna find the same thing. So, whereas in the beginning, if you had just, you know, you got your cold email to here and you just kept going, kept learning more about it, more about it, more about it, it's gonna work. I don't want you to sit around and start saying cold email doesn't work, Facebook, IG, LinkedIn, whatever, it doesn't work, because it does work. Somebody else is already doing it. If somebody else has already done it, it does work. Don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that it doesn't. And quite frankly, you shouldn't either, because that kind of belief is not going to help you. Make sure that you're aware that if you're doing cold email, you stick to cold email. If you're doing organic marketing, stick to organic marketing. I don't really care what you do. Just make sure that you do it. 
Um, make sure that you're able to use some critical thinking and decide whether or not your audience is even on the platform in the first place. Um, if you do see that your audience is on one of these platforms and not the others, then focus on that one. If you find out that they're on Facebook, IG and LinkedIn, the best thing to do is pick one, focus on that, but then cross post your platform, uh, you cross post your content onto the other platforms. This video isn't so much about organic marketing or about acquisition. It's just me to give you a couple little tips here that's going to help you out and improve the acquisition when it comes to the agency. The last thing that I want to talk about today is fulfillment. When it comes to fulfillment, you should be looking at hiring a contractor. You shouldn't be looking at fulfilling the fulfillment for yourself. The main reason for that is fulfillment is one of five areas of the business that you need to focus on. If you're only focusing on fulfillment, then you're not able to focus on the, the other four areas. The business is going to fall apart. So you've got to make sure that you're actually focusing on everything, which is your role as the business owner, uh, the agency owner. You're going to make sure that you're not trying to become an expert at Facebook ads or TikTok or whatever it is that you're looking to do as your service, your, the mechanism of delivering the result to your, um, to your clients. You've got to make sure that you're not trying to become the very best at that right now. You can, you can learn about it later and that's what I'm trying to communicate here is the more, yes, the more that you know about the fulfillment, the better. But at this time, you don't need to become an absolute expert. You just need to be able to, to know the fulfillment system that you can use in the agency. When I talk about fulfillment, you should know how you're gonna onboard the client. You should have a good onboarding process. And then you should know the general outline, general outline of your service delivery. At the end of the day, if you're doing TikTok ads or let's just say UGC and TikTok, you need to know what that entails, exactly what that looks like. If you're doing, uh, I'm gonna use like more like meta ads because that's primarily what we work with. I'm more familiar with myself. Um, at the end of the day, you've got to know what that funnel process looks like. You've got to know that you're going to run X particular ad to a cold uh, to a cold audience, and then you're going to run some retargeting, and you're going to send them to the landing page. And you need to know a little bit about what makes makes a good landing page or what makes a good website. But you don't need to be a pro at this, right? The end of the day, I'm going to give you this little secret now because you you've been into this video 17 minutes. So if you're here, I'm going to give you a little secret. You will notice if you if you're new, you will notice when you start taking sales calls that prospects are asked generally the same five to ten questions. They don't really change. Now and again, you are going to get an odd question pop up that's a little bit random, and then you're going to have to deal with that on the spot. But by then, you'll be able to deal with it because you'll be used to questions popping up. At the end of the day, and I mean this with all sincerity, I've taken a lot a lot of sales calls. You must understand this. Prospects ask the same questions. It's always the same stuff. When you've taken five to 10 calls, you will realize by then that you, you know, the questions that they ask are the same, they're just getting repeated. So once you get somebody that asks a question, you don't know how to respond, write it down, make a list of it, obviously after the sales call, um, write down what the response would be. And then the next time it, will, it comes up, because it probably will come up, you just use that response and then you're good. So this is just a little thing. Um, there's more, I guess, about the, the sales aspect, but at the end of the day, when it comes to, the reason that I bring that up is when it comes to fulfillment, you don't need to be an expert. There's just a few things that you need to learn. Once you know what you need to learn based on the questions you get, you just know that stuff and you communicate it. If somebody sits in and, and asks you a question that you don't know, you should go and find out the answer. Because the truth is you should know how the fulfillment works. You should aim to become good at this. But what I'm saying right now is you don't need to be an absolute pro at media buying or something like that. Generally though, the more that you learn about the niche, the more that you know about the acquisition, and the more that you know about your, how you're delivering the result to the client, the better. At this case right now, the main two that you've got to focus on is this, but do not neglect the fulfillment. The fulfillment is the third area that you must know, and you must know it quite well. You must know at least the general outline of the service delivery, what's included, what type of campaigns, maybe what type of creatives would work, just stuff that you will need to communicate in the sales call. If you're gonna say, excuse me, if you're gonna say to somebody on a sales call, we need creatives, you should expect them to ask what kind of creatives would you need? All right, so you, but you must kind of just, to be honest with you, a lot of this is common sense. A lot of it is just looking at what your framework is of the script or your, your script or your framework, whatever, looking at that and kind of saying, okay, what kind of questions am I gonna get? And then making sure that you're able to answer those questions. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave the video here. These are the three main areas that I would focus on improving niche acquisition fulfillment if you improve those you're going to be able to hit your goals quicker 
All you gotta focus on is doing these three things um, and then you're able to actually get to that goal a lot quicker than probably what you're achieving right now. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna leave this video here. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, my name is Rhys Moss. I actually operate a one-on-one -on -one mentorship program for new and existing agency owners who would like to scale to and above 15,000 pounds a month by building a consistent flow of meetings, uh, sales meetings, and also automating their fulfillment and building out a fulfillment system. If that is something that you need help with and you would like to speak to me about potentially working one-on-one -on -one to, to get those systems set up in your agency, go down in the description if you're watching on YouTube click the link to watch the demo video. It's a 25 minute Loom video going over everything that's included in the mentorship, including um, the systems that we use and the guarantees that are associated with the program um, and pretty much anything that you'd like to know. If you'd like to speak with me one-on-one, -on -one, you can go down below, you can book in a demo call with myself. There are no salespeople, this is one-on-one, -on -one, so it's between you and I. Um, or just message me on Facebook and IG. Again, it's in the description below this video if you're watching on YouTube. If you've got any questions or comments or suggestions on future videos, leave those down below in the comment section. And aside from that, I'll see you again in the next video.